Good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, depending on where you're, where and when you're watching this video. My name is Dr. Maria Krenok. This is session five on keys that will unlock healing. Uh, so if you have not watched videos one through four, I want to strongly encourage you to stop now and watch those first before go diving into this session five. Each video builds upon another um, so we're, it, it's really like one word that's being given, but we're breaking it up into 30 minute segments. And so uh, for your understanding uh, of what we are teaching on, it would be best if you started with session one and work your way through uh, all the videos up to session five here. Um, so again, these videos are, there's, I don't have any prepared notes. Um, I just have a few scriptures that the Lord has put on my heart for you. And we'll read those scriptures together and we will see uh, where the Holy Spirit takes us today. Amen. We're just going to let the Holy Ghost uh, lead and guide us. And again, these teachings are on healing for your body. And so um, actually, uh, I kind of heard the question in my spirit, when, Dr. Maria, are you going to get to the cross and teach on the cross? Because up to this point, we really haven't taught on the cross and part of the reason for that is we have taught on that in our very extensively um, in our teachings, Healing Made Simple. Uh, we have a book and we have audio teachings. So if you are looking for that teaching um, on the cross, I want to encourage you to get the healing pack um, and it will break that down for you um, in a very, very simple way. Uh, but tonight, uh, the, the Lord gave me um, a scripture in Proverbs um, and in James. So those are the places we're going to go tonight. Um, so in Proverbs, uh, in chapter 4, verse 20, it says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh, all your flesh. Hallelujah. This verse sounds very similar to the one we started off with, with um, some of our first sessions in Joshua 1, 8, when it says, for this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night and for then you will have good success and for then you will have prosperity. And prosperity is not just in the wealth arena, but, you know, we, we see in the word where the word says um, uh, that I pray that you prosper in your soul. So prosperity is not just wealth, but prospering in our soul and prospering in our bodies. So between Joshua 1, 8, of meditate on the word day and night. This scripture in Proverbs is, is really saying the same thing. My son, give attention or meditate on my words and incline your ears to my sayings. We know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So our ears play a part in meditation, um, in hearing the word and meditating on the word. And it says, do not let them depart from your eyes. Okay. So what we are looking at with our eyes is going to determine uh, where our heart is at, right? So this is keep them in the midst of your heart. So it's super important. I want you to notice that your ears and your eyes play a factor in what is allowed in your heart and what you keep in your heart, right? Uh, is going to determine what kind of health you have in your flesh or in your body. So we've got eyes going on in this scripture. We've got ears going on in this scripture. And we've got our heart going on in this scripture. And we also know that the word says out, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever you allow into your heart is what is going to come out your mouth. And what comes out your mouth uh, actually determines uh, how, how health is going to be in your body. 
And we'll take you into that a little bit deeper in just a minute here. So I just want to point out the meditation aspect. We've been talking the last uh, few sessions uh, briefly about meditation. All right. So uh, a lot of other religions uh, focus in on meditation and um, they did not get that on their own. They stole that from the word of God. Meditation is a tool for you and I to, to meditate on God's word so it'll be lodged in our heart and there will be a manifestation of health in our bodies, right? So what we are looking at with our eyes and what we are listening to with our ears is going to affect what our heart believes, all right? Because it's with the heart one believes unto righteousness, right? And so super important, guys, to be meditating on healing scriptures and what the word of God has to say about you. And I want to, I just recently, um, I, I uh, stumbled upon a uh, one of those scientific articles written by a scientist magazine. And it was on, they were... Uh, talking about the, uh, I don't even know what you call it, but I guess they call it mindfulness. It's a psychology thing. And mindfulness, the, the article went on to say, comes from the uh, Buddhist religion. Uh, I guess, so they say, right? And this mindfulness thing is meditation <laughs> in simplicity. It's meditation. It's med and they have you meditate on the present and what's going on now and uh, but to, to calm yourself and just think on these little things, right? And this article went on to say that there's now studies that show that people that participate in mindfulness, right, in, in this secular arena now um, are, that are struggling with suicide, struggling with depression, and struggling with anxiety and other mental problems when they did not have those problems before they started mindfulness. So what's going on here? They are under the wrong spirit. They are not meditating on the word of God. They are meditating on other things. Meditation, guys, opens you up to the spirit realm. So we must do meditation properly and we meditate on the promises of God under Jesus and his blood. Amen. So the secular arena has taken meditation uh, um, out of the word of God and they've taken it and they've perverted it and they're opening themselves up to the wrong spirit and it's causing problems. But when we as Christians, as born again believers, uh, use this tool that God has given us to meditate on his word is because it's then that the Holy Spirit comes and breathes on that word and brings uh, the promises of God to life or to manifestation. Amen. Okay. And so uh, again, when we keep reading in Proverbs, um, it says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. And then it goes on to say, put away from you uh, deceitful mouth, okay, and a perverse lips far from you. So again, the word is bringing attention to words and what's coming out your mouth. So if we are speaking things that are perverse, um, I'm, I'm talking about, uh, you know, we can be Christians and speak things uh, perversely, right? When we speak against the word of God, that is not right. And so that is perversely. So we don't want to let anything that is perverse come out of our mouth, right? Anything that is not of faith, right? So we don't want to go around saying, you know, we're sick, we're sick, we're sick, right? So when I was sick, okay, when I, uh, um, uh, for seven months, I was bedridden, Okay, I, I haven't had a real chance in these videos yet to share my testimony when the doctors tried to pronounce cancer over my life. We've been talking about words, okay? And so when I was sick and I was bedridden for seven months, I kept saying out of my mouth, I am sick, I am sick, I am sick. And I kept going to the doctor and I would go to the doctor and I would say, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, okay? That was... Uh, not the right thing to speak. The more you speak it, the more it lodges in there. All right. And so it wasn't until I changed my mind. 
right? It's according to the promises of the word of God that by his stripes, I'm healed <laughs> that every symptom left my body. But before I even go further into how the Lord raised me up off my sick bed, I want to take us over um, into James. Um, the Lord just put James on my heart recently to share with you. And this is such a powerful, um, a powerful scripture. Actually, um, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's go there. So let's go to James. James, James, James. James chapter 3. All right, we're going to start with verse 2, okay? It says, for, for we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word. Notice when you stumble, <laughs> when you're a Christian and you stumble, the first place it happens is right here. Because it says right here that, uh, if anyone does not stumble in word, all right, we've been talking about the miracles in your mouth and the power of your words. Okay. He says, if anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man. Okay. Uh, and also bridles, uh, the whole body. Notice that. Look at that. Wow. Wow able to, if you can get a hold of your words, it says it will affect your whole, not even part of your body. It says your whole body. That's, that's, that's insane, <laughs> but it's the truth. Glory to God. All right. So I, I got to read it again for we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man able also to bridle his whole body. So our mouth, our words are connected to our entire body from the top of our head to the soles of our feet to the little pinky toe. Glory to God. All right. So this is super, super important, guys. This is why we're spending so much time on words. Okay. It says verse three, Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body with that bit in their mouth. This is what James says, okay? So a horse is a huge wild animal, man. We have big moose out here, right? But it's saying that depending on, on what words are coming out your mouth, you can cause big things things, wild things to obey you. But if you don't have that bit in your mouth to control what, what you are, are, are saying, right? To, to say the right things, then that, that wild beast is going to go wild, right? So wild circumstances in your life, right? You put that bit in your mouth and you release the word of God and you begin to speak to things. Hallelujah. You can move mountains. We, 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 we shared on that on one of our previous videos about we can, we can say to that mountain, be removed and it shall be removed if we do not doubt in our heart, right? But believe, right? So literally we can cause things to obey us when we speak to them. All right, so that's the horse, okay? The horse is that wild animal, all right? And then it says, uh, verse four, look also at the ships, okay? Here's another analogy. James gives us three analogies in this scripture. He's given us a horse, he's gonna give us a ship, and he's gonna give us the fire. He's gonna give us a horse, he's gonna give us a ship, and he's gonna give us the fire. So now we're gonna move on to number two, and we're gonna look at the ship. All right, so let's go look at the ship. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and driven, right, by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. All right, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Okay, so... You and I, we are the ship, all right? 
Our tongue is the rudder to our ship. Our tongue is the rudder to our life. With one word, we can literally change the course of our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What we speak today will determine the direction of our life tomorrow. <laughs> I know this is wild stuff. Okay. And it's so simple, right? See, these are works of faith, right? The word of God says, right, that without faith, it's impossible to please God, right? But it also says that um, faith is dead without works. It's not talking about carnal works, right? It's talking about works of righteousness. And so um, our tongue, what we speak today will determine the direction of our life tomorrow. All right. So because every word that we speak is, according to the word of God, is a seed. Words are seeds. And so whatever seed you plant is what your harvest will be. Okay. So that's super important, right? Because if you are speaking words like I was, <laughs> I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, right? I am planting seeds of sickness that is bearing a harvest of sickness. All right. So I can't make it any more simple, simpler than this. If we plant a corn seed, right? What are we going to harvest? Are we going to harvest a carrot? After we plant a corn seed? No, we're going to get corn. So whatever we are letting out our mouth, we are sowing seed. Okay. And so the Bible talks about the word is a seed. The sower went out and sowed the word. Okay. And so we're not going to go into that scripture today. But my point is we have to be um, diligent as born again believers, Holy Spirit filled, born again believers, we must be diligent about what we are speaking, what we are allowing out of our mouth. Okay. We have been given a great power of, of what we speak and it will determine how you live tomorrow. Okay. And so the meditation all comes into this guys, because if you meditate all day long on how mad you are at somebody, and then you try to speak something nice to them at the end of the day, it's not going to work <laughs> right? because you have meditated on it. And now you're going to release a seed over it. And now it's going to bear fruit. And now, um, you're going to have uh, an explosion in that relationship. And we're not here to talk about relationships, but <laughs> <laughs> that's how that works, right? So if we are meditating on healing scriptures and healing for our body, and then we begin to let out the promises of God, that it is God who heals all my diseases. And I don't have to stay sick today. Hallelujah. And it's not, it's not denying that there's something there. Okay. We're not about denying, you know, if the doctor's report comes back with the test and says, you know, with the blood test and all that, and says they show this, this, and this, and this. We're not denying that, okay? But what we're doing is we are acknowledging that God is greater than that report, all right? God has the power to change that report because he, through his son Jesus, has already done the work. Hallelujah. He did the hard part, guys. He did the suffering on the cross. His body was broken, so our body doesn't have to be broken. His blood was spilled, so our blood does not have to be spilled. Hallelujah. All right, so our part, okay, so there is a part for us to do in healing. It's not, it's free, all right, but there are works of righteousness, and it's faith and confession. So those are not hard things to do. So why not do them? It's like Naaman, man. He had leprosy and he, he thought he was just the coolest guy and military guy. And when he was told that he had to go dip seven times, he was upset that, that it was so simple. <laughs> and he was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm too good for that, 
that dirty water over there. Thank God he had a servant that had some common sense in the end. And the servant said to him, hey, man, I mean, if he would have asked you to do a really hard thing, wouldn't you have done it? You know, if it was something complicated and if it was some formula or whatever, wouldn't you have done it? Right. And so he finally, he went, he dipped seven times and he came out according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord said, go dip seven times. Right. And then he got offended about that. Right. And so he didn't want to do it. So some of you, maybe you don't want to do faith and confession, but you're not going to get away with it. You have to do this. <laughs> Faith and confession. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. With, with the mouth, <laughs> confession is made unto salvation, which includes your healing. Your faith and confession is your vehicle to healing. All right? So James is telling us we've been given this powerful tool called our tongue. All right? And he kind of brings it into a negative uh, thing here. This is why I'm turning it around, right, for a positive thing, okay, because as he, he keeps going, he goes now, um, let's see, verse 5 and 6, says, see how great a forest a, a, a little fire kindles, and the tongue is a fire, okay, the tongue is a fire, and a world, he says, he doesn't say a little iniquity, he goes, it's a big world of iniquity, all right, so that's not real positive. <laughs> the tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body. It defiles your body, Paul says, okay, so that's super negative, <laughs> but we can turn that around, right? So some people want to just go, oh yeah, I can't, you know, my tongue, I can't control it. And, and they use that as an excuse because he says this, that is not the truth. When you yield yourself to the word of God and to the Holy Spirit, when you dedicate your tongue to speak the oracles of God, to speak the promises of God, and you just yield yourself to the things of God. Hallelujah. Your tongue will speak great and mighty things and it will affect your body. You heard my testimony in the other videos, how I spoke to my teeth and God completely healed my teeth. And he raised me up off my sick bed when the doctors, they tried to pronounce cancer over my life. And I was saying, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. But as soon as I changed what I was saying, when I changed my mind to begin to speak something different, hallelujah, every disease, every symptom left my body, hallelujah. And so it was in connection with changing my mind and what I was letting out my mouth according to what God's word says about me. Hallelujah. So it, it James does say that it will defile your whole body. So I just want to point out in this scripture, we started from the beginning from verse two, for, for we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he's a perfect man also able also to bridle his whole body. Your tongue, your mouth is connected to your bodily health. Hallelujah. So we must be speaking, get the promises of God in you by meditating. My son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Let them be lodged deep in your heart. Why? Because the word of God is a seed. The words you speak is a seed, but the word of God you receive are seeds as well. The seed that will bear fruit. So we must keep our ears filled with the promises of God and keep our eyes on the word of God when we are walking out a miracle. That means that we have to put blinders on our eyes for the negativity, right? And and when the doctor's report comes, right, we can say, okay, I see that, but that's not the truth, all right? That God is greater than that report. And I'm not gonna let that into my heart. I'm not gonna take that into, I believe that that is my destination, right? Because we are the ship, 
right? So we can begin to speak the destination for our body. So we talk our way by the word of God and meditation into our healing. All right. And so we must allow that meditation to happen. Hallelujah. The meditation of my heart, David would say, glory to God. And when we, and just like Joshua 1, 8 said, that as we meditate on the word of God day and night, then we will have good success in healing. And then we'll have prosperity in our soul and in our bodies. Amen. And so we must do that. And I just want to remind you, we have healing made simple. Again, we teach on the cross in these teachings um, and many other things that will break it down for you really in simplicity. I cannot express how important these teachings are. In my mind, these teachings are not optional anymore. We, when, with, we, these were written during COVID. And so disease is still running around the earth, right? And of course, it's been running around the earth. But to equip you to live and stay disease-free, these are things that you need to practice, what we're teaching in these videos. But these teachings, um, get these as well. Um, Every, people are just walking out of uh, cancer, arthritis, all kinds of things. Um, and you just got to get these guys. They'll really help you. And I, I cannot express how people have said thank you so much for putting those teachings together and how they have helped them. So I just want to encourage you to get those. Um, and, and I want to encourage you today again, again, <laughs> right, to let out of your mouth God's word concerning your healing. He will breathe upon you. Ask him for that rhema word to stand on, right? When, when, when it was my teeth, the Lord gave me the verse in Romans, right? That the word of God is near you. It's in your heart and it's in your mouth. And I grabbed that and I said, my goodness, if the word of God's in my mouth, surely the power of God is in my teeth. Hallelujah. So those are some things to um, uh, look at in the word today. Uh, and let's see here. And so, yep. Yeah. Well, James goes on to say, says, but no man can tame the, the tongue. It's an unruly evil. That's where I'm talking about. People like, well, I can't control my what comes out of my mouth. Yes, you can. <laughs> it just needs to be yielded to the Holy Spirit. All right. So that our time's up today. Um, but I wanted to leave you with that. Um, and we will uh, continue on uh, in the next session. God bless you. If this word has blessed you today, um, I just want to invite you to share it with somebody that it might help, somebody who's believing for healing in their life. Have them start with, the, of course, the first video and work their way through. Give them all the videos. And if you are not already a subscriber of our YouTube channel, I just want to invite you to hit the subscribe button. And I think there's a notification button or something. And then it will let you know every time we publish one of these videos. We love you guys. God bless you. And until the next video, 